Hey, good morning, everybody. Nice, quiet morning here in the jungle. And it's funny how things pop into your mind sometimes and you don't know why. And this happened a long, long time ago. Over 30 years ago, when I very first got into solar, I only had a couple of panels, a couple of batteries, brand spanking new to the whole thing. And one morning I woke up and my cabin was on fire. Why did that pop into my mind? And back then I was using kerosene lamps in the house for light, for reading, uh, and just any kind of nighttime light. Kerosene lamps. And I decided to hook up a, an electric lamp off the batteries. And I just thought that was so great. And all I did was take some lamp wire, just like this is all it was. And I split that wire. You know, it's got that line right down the middle. I pulled it apart, connected one end to the negative side of my batteries, one end to the positive side, ran it into the house, the batteries were sitting outside back then, freezing cold temperatures, mind you, lead acid, mind you. And I connected the positive and negative into the on-off switch of the lamp. And I'd been running that for weeks. And I just thought, this is great. I'm getting off the kerosene. So yeah, for those of you that know this old lamp kind of cord here, it's also what you find now on cheaper extension cables. So I had it cut off on one end, split down the middle, and then stripped the wire or stripped the casing off, tied into the battery, tied into the lamp. Had about 15 feet of this running across laying on my wood floor in my cabin. Looked just like that. And I took the bare ends of that wire just screwed them on to the battery terminals. Drilled a little teeny hole in my wood floor so I could feed that wire from the outside battery box up into the cabin. Run that wire across the floor. Strip the other ends. Screwed them onto the lamp. And I had lights. I was so thrilled about that. Till one morning very early, very cold, very snowy. I woke up and I smelled smoke. And that'll get you out of bed real quick. And it did. <laughs> so by the time I smelled the smoke, uh, there was no casing left on that wire going across the floor. It was all melted off and the wire itself was burning into the floor and I was just starting to see a teeny bit of flame. So it had been burning that wood for a while and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> but when there's fire in the house, you start running around pretty quick. So since there was a 15 foot long strip of uh, molten wire burning through my cabin floor uh, and this is I had no cutoff switches no fuses on this whatsoever it'd been working just fine for weeks and I was so happy to be off kerosene anyway I ran outside ran through the snow went out to the battery box threw the lid off the battery box and reached down and grabbed those wires with my bare hands and pulled them off the battery as quick as I could to cut that circuit. And needless to say, I got a nice streak across my hands from grabbing that wire like that too, burned. It took me one second. I just grabbed them and yanked them off just to cut that connection because that wire was pulling power off those batteries willy-nilly. So with the condensation that built up in that battery box and then would melt if it got a little bit warmer or whatever, it 
created, you know, a connection between that battery and the wire. And there's nothing to stop that whatsoever. Nothing. And I can remember going to my solar distributor back then and told him of my waking up to the cabin being on fire. And he just looked at me and smiled and said, oh, you should have had a inline fuse on that wire. And I was like, oh, you got one of those? I'll take it. Yeah, it was about a $2 remedy for that. And not to suggest that I had that hooked up properly in any kind of a way, but if there had been an inline fuse on that wire, the minute there had been a connection from moisture or a piece of ice or something connecting that wire to that battery and, you know, it just decided to start pulling power without the lamp being on, of course the lamp was off. You know, when I went to sleep that night, I turned the lamp off. Who knows when that started to happen? But those wires just keep pulling the power off. And even though I only had maybe 200 amp hours only, uh, that running wild through some wire, yeah, wires melt. <laughs> they do melt. And they will catch on fire. So that was when I was super brand new. To solar and it not only made an impression on my floor of my cabin it made an impression in my brain and that just came to my mind today for some reason and I thought I'd share that don't do as I did so even if I would have had just a five amp inline fuse there that fuse would have popped and broke the circuit and that would not have happened and since I was using a you know, a low wattage light bulb, even back then, and they're super cheap now, and the one I had in there, I'm not kidding you, would cost like $40 back then to draw just a, a few watts. Uh, so yeah, just a little, little small breaker would have cut that circuit and stopped that from happening. <laughs> yeah, so... Live and learn. So yeah, solar power is wonderful. Uh, it was wonderful then. It's still wonderful now. Respect the power. Make sure you get all your safety features in place. Runaway power. Uh, those batteries are packing a lot of power. So, you know, I don't really anticipate ever having runaway power again, but make sure you got something that'll snap before you snap or before you catch anything on fire. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Yeah, trip down memory lane. Why did I think of that today? I don't know. <laughs>